Hi, I'm Avalon Starlight, and you are listening to the Rebel Unicorns podcast. This season, I'm super stoked because we are talking about something very near and dear to my heart, chakras, and how they can completely transform your life and your business. Listen each week as I share my own chakra experiences, as well as introducing you to incredible guests with their own chakra stories. Are you ready? Let's get our rebel on. Oh my goodness, Rebel Unicorns, I am so excited. I have one of my favorite humans in the land. Yes, I have a lot of favorite humans, but this one particularly is so badass and so rebellious and so just so dang lovable at the same time. I remember like meeting my guest today and just feeling an instant connection. And the next thing I know, I'm getting a picture in my Facebook messenger of a new tarot deck called Rebel Unicorns. And in that moment, I mean, that was a kismet moment. I mean, I could sit here and talk about the accolades of today's guest because she truly is incredible working with gifted kids, which as you know, I have one in unlocking their true superpowers and what it is that really is gonna be the light that they shine and create in this world. And so I'm so excited to have the punk rock doc, JJ Kelly with me today. JJ, welcome to the Rebel Unicorns podcast. (laughs) That might be the best intro I've ever gotten. Thank you so much. You nailed it, dude. (laughs) I think intros are my favorite part of having a podcast. I'm like, I don't want your bio. I want to tell whatever I want to tell about you. (laughs) I mean, I think we all know what we're walking into on your podcast here. So if you're not going to go with the flow, you probably shouldn't be your guest. True, true. And I, we were just talking about something because I like to kind of share as we're getting started, like what your rebel unicorn house is. So those who are listening can kind of be like, oh yeah, I'm a that or I'm a that and get some side of, sort of clarity. But we, you have a, a different story about your rebel unicorn house that I want to kind of bring up for okay. the listeners today. If you can share. Oh, I'm supposed to share? Just- yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, go for it. Oh, oh shit, it's me. Okay, uh, I think that... I just the part we were just talking about, like when I first did it, I'm pretty sure I had yours and yours is the cosmic. Has it always been the cosmic too? Oh, fucking right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And that, that's what tripped me up because then this time when I did it as a prelude to coming on your podcast, I did it again and it said ancestral. And then I was like, wait, but I, that's not what I had last time. A typical me. (laughs) Right. (laughs) That's not what I had last time. Um, <laughs> but, but, you know, it tripped me up because you had the same one throughout. And so I was like, oh, am I supposed to, what the hell? Well, but I do think that ancestral feels, it like resonates inside me. Now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love ancestral for you. So just for those listening, like we are all four rebel unicorn houses within us at any given moment. Like we all have some snippets of of each house, but we're dominant in one. Like it's the most like, this is the nectar of our experience. And so for you, JJ, why I love ancestral the mostest is because ancestrals are leading the, like to me, they're the rarest by the way, which obviously makes sense. And they're, they're here to leave the world differently than when you came on it. Wonderful, cause that is true. Right, and the, you, ancestrals oftentimes are paving the way for our kids. Oh, that's touching. Yeah, I am. That is like my mission. And so that's why when I read it, I was like, "Oh my god, of course you're ancestral," because literally, um, I always say, ancestrals are changing the vibration of our children. Period. Oh, I love that, dude. <laughs> And I totally am. That is dead on. Oh my God. Cool. That's so cool. It is super cool. And it's also super cool because we, you and I were just talking about something really powerful. And so for those that are listening to the podcast, what happens is I get the guests that I love and we start talking prior to pressing record. And then I'm like, shit, we need to stop talking because this is like what the entire podcast can be like spoken to because this is heart chakra week this is the week of talking about you know 
What are we responsible for? What are we carrying? What emotions are we holding? Are we protecting our heart? Are we allowing ourselves to receive more love? Are we giving our love with ease into the world? And I would love to get your take on Heart Chakra and Heart Chakra Ooh. Week, JJ. That's a great idea. It makes me nervous, but if I were you, I would do that exact thing. Yes. Um, Cause there's still, uh, for me, there's a lot to learn, but I guess what I've learned from you um, that really resonated is that when I, I don't even, I don't know time, but when I first came to you, let's say six months ago, I have no idea. Um, my heart was all full. Um, oh no, it was like a year. It was like a year ago. Oh my God. Cause I was, oh my God. Yeah. Okay. Cause I had all my clients all stuck in my heart and I was all like martyry and like what do you want from me and I had changed from private practice to a business model because I don't like all the isms and mental health so you know like you said I'm paving a new way I'm making something new I was kind of hung up back then on burning down the existing <laughs> but no I'm just, like, oh, I'll just offer something new and that will that will be just as good so uh I mean the punk comes out every once in a while so, uh, <laughs> well, this is the rebel unicorn podcast so I mean we talk about burning down the patriarchy a lot on this podcast. I mean yes one match at a time yes so um so my I was full I was too full I didn't know how to like process out my love and letting go of love and you know i work in dialectics so everything is the venn diagram so that was working for me i knew there was a push and pull i knew there was a holding of two opposing forces and ideas i just couldn't quite get through it and that was you helping me clear that out and the letting go of them as a way of letting them i mean it sounds obvious now but it was much felt it seemed more complex to me and it, it it continues to be somewhat complex but I just watch for any time I get martyry about it and then clear 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 do you remember the physical sensations of what it felt like to be holding the responsibility of so many oh, of your yes. clients that back thing I I've had that back thing since I think college I, I haven't really had it in like 10 years because I did acupuncture for 10 years but well, still more than that, but um, I, I call it the trifecta of pain. It's like my neck, my lat under my um, armpit and then crossing over to my spine and then back up to like where the neck meets the shoulder. And I have known this physical sensation for the majority of my life and worked on it and knew that it was behind my heart and it, you know, like shouldering the burden, literally, physically. <laughs> yes. Like, how the hell did I need somebody to tell me that? My <laughs> acupuncturist told me that. And I was like, what? Oh my God. That's so good. I wish it were mine. Like, I was pissed. I didn't think of it myself. But <laughs> that's part of it, right? Is not being able to accept help, shouldering the burden all by yourself, being super independent. Like, like I haven't been called out by every coach about like fierce independence. Uh, so it it's a control thing too. There's a yep. tightness, a control and it hurt. So there's a stagnance too. I always could feel there's a, I said congestion. Mm, that's a great word. You know, like an energetic stagnation behind my heart. And for those listening, this is like, I love that you described it just like that, because for me reading the energy of it, I call it the, the library of other people's emotions. Oh, wow. Right. It's like, like if you were to walk into a library and you, for me, it's always like a chemic lab and you see beakers and different books and different things, like everything, right. That's what it feels like, or that's what it looks like energetically when I can get into somebody's heart chakra and notice that they're carrying like everybody and their uncle in their heart and feeling responsible for the well being or the care or the outcomes or the, this or the, that, or the, this or the, that. So 
Do you know where the responsibility or where you picked up that like um, practice of uh, being responsible for others came from, JJ? Uh -huh, yeah. Um, what's funny is I was just going to say that very thing, which I normally would not say in any kind of public Thing. I don't think I've ever said it publicly. One, some clients, I you know, I'll reveal personal stuff, but I'm still new to the um, coming out onto social media stuff. But yeah, taking my, with my childhood and taking care of my brothers and trying to draw fire so to protect them. Yeah. And we all have this, this like weird, when we lift, my brothers and I, when we like do back, we all grow our back really fast. Like my brothers can't grow their calves worth of shit, you know, but do back tw two times. It's like, bow. <laughs> so it's already ready to have bulk. And my acupuncture, I mean, it's much, mine is much like slimmer than it used to be. My back just was hulkish in muscle. <laughs> well, when we're carrying that backpack of responsibility, right? right? We're already doing a workout every single day when we're going into this. And I mean, we're talking about it from the level of client, but oftentimes we can take the responsibility of our parents, of our, our oh, siblings, yeah. of our, you know, boyfriends, partners, like pets. Like, yeah. I mean, we really can load our hearts full of just about everything and everyone. And so what would you say would be the most significant way in which you really felt the release of letting go of that almost like identity, if, if you will? Yeah, it is an identity for sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's happened in stages, right? Like different points in life when, you know, I, I was like, you know what? I can't hang out with you anymore because I, you're, too toxic for me and there's a layer, layer right and then over the years with relationships and then they end and friendships may be developing and ending but I remember being on the table I went I went to acupuncture because I was so fucked up when a friend of mine got killed in 2003 I didn't know I my heart cracked in half and that's a significant moment as well. And I was so fucked up. I thought I was going to maybe like have to take meds or something, which I really didn't want to do. And so I went to acupuncture and he, I mean, I cried for like six months on the table mm. and I never cried in front of anybody. You know, I fancied myself as badass, you know, which turns out I am more so with the vulnerability. There is a dialectic for you. And so I remember Jacques saying to me pretty early on, you know, you are a phenomenal clinician. And I was like, thank you. And he goes, and if you died tomorrow, they'd find someone else. And I was like, I was so pissed when he said, I was so like insulted. And we talked about ego, right? Like, yeah. I didn't know, I was like, 29 or something you know I didn't know I was pissed and but I thought about that year after year and I thought you know as I went through grieving and I I found the gratitude that I had for my friend who died because of what that did to me I couldn't hide with armor anymore I was crying in public I'm crying on the street I'm crying in front of classmates at my new grad school for psych and I'm bawling all the time you know like there was no, I couldn't help it, but now I can help it. And I still like to cry like that all these years later. It's such a gift. Well, and I think that that's a, a powerful thing because you brought up what we were talking about right before we got on too, which this is this level of grief, right? Oh, that yeah. this is like, and I was talking to one of my coaches today and he brought up that grief and praise are two sides of the same coin in a way, because like it, it's in the grief that we start to realize the life, right? Like you, like you said, like you could, like in that moment that your, your heart cracked open, like you couldn't hide, you couldn't protect, you couldn't do anything. And then you said about the gratitude that you felt for your friend's passing for the gift that that allowed you to experience and to feel and how I believe 
you know, in, in our I always get this Western culture, right? Like we don't have the same grieving processes on in anything, right? Like we think about like when back in the day when women would get their periods, right? There would they, you would go into the red tent and you would grieve the loss of your childhood. Like there would be a full ceremony, a ritual, a yeah. celebration of grief. I just got shivers. Yeah, because I, I I remember saying that all the time. I still say it that you know, why don't we wear black for a year anymore? Like a year is nothing. You're still a mess after a year, but at least, you know, about four months in, I, I think people forget, people forget you're grieving. They're already uncomfortable. Like they're scared around you. They're anxious. Your grief makes them anxious. Then you end up caretaking for them. It's a fucking nightmare. Um, but the black, the wearing black for a year, I, I bet that was nice for people or even the band around the black band around the arm. I know, you know, Jews wear that ripped, the torn ribbon on their look, like, is that lapel? I don't know on their chest. And like, because they're, it's, they're torn. Mm. I think that's wonderful. There, there's a symbolic gesture. It's like, don't expect me to be normal for your comfort. Like my heart cracked open. It needs some time to heal. I don't care what we're eating for dinner. My friend is gone forever, you know? Mm -hmm. Get so pissed off about like the minutia of life, but that's what everybody else's experience is. They're, they're not in that grieving moment and nobody taught us how to do that. We're like the adolescents as Americans to these rituals. We don't, we don't know the first thing about grieving. We really, really don't. And like you said, I think that grief in itself, like probably there's people listening right now going like, okay, time to turn it off. Like, whoop, they went a little bit too deep, too serious. We're they're talking about grief. And we're at a time in the world right now where the grief is like a, a bit of a heavy blanket on the earth. Yeah, I agree. Right? We're, we're at a point where this, this is going to air in January. So I don't know where we're going to be, but you know, where COVID is in its second wave, that people are being told they can't visit their families for the holidays, that we cannot follow any traditions or normalcy. No one's allowed to celebrate New Year's in the same form. Do you remember when 2020 started? And we're like, 2020 vision, it's gonna be the like most like, yes. the most yes. powerful year of sight. Yes, dude. <laughs> yep. I yep. think we are all seeing a lot clearer now though. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> And you know, this, this is what's so funny is I've been teaching emotional intelligence skills training, the class, the DBT class since 2004. Holy and it's crikeys. like, no, pardon? I said, holy crikeys. I, I yeah. didn't know it was like 16 years. Yeah. And now, it's only now that people are realizing, hey, I have no emotional intelligence skills. Maybe I should get some before I murder my family or my spouse or, you know, like people are going mental and then they're self-medicating. And I do think that COVID has illuminated this missing piece of where were we ever taught how to skillfully and effectively manage our emotions? Nowhere. So I, that's kind of why I'm like coming out too, is because I need to be teaching this to everyone in the whole world. So I think this is an important question for those that are listening that maybe are like, yeah, I am grieving. Yeah, I am feeling emotions that I don't normally feel. Can you share a little bit about what the, the biggest emotions that you're noticing people are, are struggling with right now and maybe a couple tips that they can have in order to manage during this time? Yeah, um, <clears throat> feel free to jump in because if there, if you add specifics to questions like that, I can be more useful. But in general, <clears throat> sadness for sure. Grief because of everything we knew is mm -hmm. gone. It's mm -hmm. been taken away is how people feel, which leads me to the pissed off part. Anger is in there yeah. and people don't wanna deal with the anger. They're, they can do the sadness to some extent, but they don't want to do the anger, particularly, you know, in the Bay Area, like everybody's so enlightened. It's like unenlightened to feel anger and admit it. I'm not an angry person. I meditate. It's not spiritual to be I, yeah. <laughs> angry. Which makes zero sense to me. It's an emotion like any other emotion. Um, you got to learn how to manage it effectively, blah, blah, blah. But you know what stuffed anger creates? 
spiked anxiety. So everybody's already afraid. And then they're kind of, they're self-medicating or they're focusing on what they don't have. So they're like creating sadness when really they're ignoring the pissed off. So then they're putting a lid on that anger, which is like, you know, stuffed anger, man, takes so much energy to keep a lid on. And then their anxiety goes more panic attacks. It just goes through the roof, anxiety attacks, panic attacks, screaming or, or scream crying, like just melting down like that, like triad of emotions is it's like it's a baton is being passed between the three or all three are happening at the same time. And so how important do you think it is for the parents to begin to, um, you know, normalize the, the emotional frequency of value, like what range, what is the word I want to use here to define experience. like experience? You have to stop ignoring our emotional experiences as a whole country, by the way, particularly if we want to heal that divide everyone's talking about. However, the parents, the parents don't really know much more than the kids in the emotional intelligence department. So it's like the family is struggling and all families have, you know, emotions that they encourage and emotions that they discourage unconsciously. They don't mean to. But, you know, an Irish family from the Midwest like mine, anger, hell yeah, we do anger. (laughs) But we don't do fear. You're not a pansy, you know? (laughs) Like, what? Don't be a wuss. Suck it up, you know? Like, fear is not on and there's no crying or sadness unless it's awake and everyone's wasted. So, you know, (laughs) so I am not saying that, you know, I'm perfect. I'm saying if I could do it, anybody can. Well, and I'm going to, I'm just going to jump on that because my family was a polar opposite, right? Like sadness and guilt and shame. Oh yeah. Roll in that. That's, that's our, that's your pool. That's what you're meant to feel. That's the normal emotion of the family. But anger, anger was dirty. Anger was wrong. Right. Right? right. That was as bad as talking about sex or money back then. You know what I mean? Like, right. And I think a lot of people think anger is like for poor people too, which is fucked. I was actually having a conversation today with a client about this because, you know, in, in when we're talking about the hurt, so now we're getting into the frequency of emotion, right? Ang- um, shame and guilt and, and that level of, of emotion is actually denser. It's a, a much heavier frequency than anger. Anger is actually a usable energy source. Like you can still stay in momentum in anger. You can still affect change in, in anger. Like it is momentous. It doesn't mean you stay in it, but it it creates more or it shifts you faster than a lower density. Yes. And it is the emotion that lets us know our boundaries are being crossed. So Mm -hmm. It's actually kind of dangerous as people assigned female at birth to Mm. walk around and ignore our anger. That's the same, you know, it keeps people in lower power positions, socioeconomically, you know, gender stuff, gender sex. Like there are reasons to not be aware of one's emotions. Why isn't it taught in schools? It ought to be taught in schools. It's not, why? I just don't think it's an accident. I don't, I don't think it's an all. accident either. No, that's cool. We're on a Rebel Unicorns podcast. Yeah. <laughs> People like you should have heard. You're the my second interview. Nikki, Nikki was like, we're, we're not for misogyny. We're not for this. We're not for that. And I was like, oh, my next interview is JJ. This podcast is going in all sorts of directions. But it's true. But this is, a, this is actually the real conversation. Like, why aren't we being taught emotional uh intelligence as a child so that we can set better boundaries and stand up for ourselves and say no with ease and without shame or judgment right right Right. because imagine what kind of a world that would create saying no without an explanation as no as a complete sentence yeah i can tell just from my personal experience it's not always received that great (laughs) But it's I true. people to fuck it too. Like too goddamn bad. 
Hey, JJ, when you get angry, first of all, aggressive, don't use that word because that's so textbook sexist. That's don't, that's used for women and for black folks. And that is a way to keep people down. That's horse shit as is the not swearing thing. Like you're not an educated person if you don't swear. Once again, there's this like white supremacy way of being that keeps certain people on top. But I totally lost my train of thought now. That's okay, because I think this is a great one. For anyone, this is just after the new year. I once had a new year's resolution to swear more because I had I was breaking down dismembering the belief that I wasn't a good mom and I wasn't a good business person if I swore. But it wasn't real because if you're marketing yourself in a specific way and you're all like, non you know and then you get a client and you're like fuck this shit that whatever and then they're like hey i thought you didn't swear because yeah. you know what i mean there's there's a truth in a in in a ownership and an authenticity authenticity whatever <laughs> and yeah. and being all in so i get you i yeah. get you on that one yeah and it's why i went 200k in debt for a doctorate that title is something that people respond to and they have this doctor worship so what i like is to disrupt the idea that a doctor knows all. There, and that it's a white person that comes from money, daddy paid for their education, and now they act in a certain way. They don't expect a doctor to have tattoos, a mouth like a sailor, and actually help. You know what I mean? Like, oh, tell me about your mother. Oh, how do you feel about that? Nodding, fuck that. When has that ever helped people? And I get tons of people, they've, everybody here has already been to a shrink. It's like their rich parents, you know, have gone to all the best ones, quote unquote, over the years. And then when it doesn't work, they come slumming with me, like when I was an intern or whatever. <laughs> and then their, their kids get happy and it's like, whoa, well, no shit. They're looking for a real person. It's really important to be real to invite other people to be their real authentic selves so that we're not performing for everybody all the time we get to have flaws we don't have to hide them and we can be happy nonetheless this perfectionistic control skinny dude come on that is not that is not the makings the foundation of a healthy country no. And I think that, you know, now is now we're starting to realize it more than ever. Right. Like now it's like the, the veil has been lifted and we can absolutely see that us not having the emotional intelligence, how disruptive it's been this year. Yes. Right. Yes. And now's the time where, you know, you have the listeners, the choice that you can make to see that. So my, my, way that I would define this is that we are spiritual beings in a human body that we get, we actually fucking chose to be in this human body to experience these yeah. emotions you've yes. been avoiding. Right. And so not only that, you have the opportunity to make it easier for your kids now. Like we didn't yeah. get that when they were younger and you have a choice right now that you can actually invite them to have different conversations about their feelings, learn about their emotions. And, you know, if you're listening and you're like, man, my kid would, re would really rip on JJ. <laughs> like they would get a real kick out of JJ and, and know that Dr. Punk, punk Rock Doc is the right person for your child because they have difficulty, because maybe they are on the edge a little bit and they're, you know, rebelling in certain ways, because that's oftentimes what repressed emotion will come up in, in, a, in a child. Totally. In my They've all, all the emotions have energy. And then you add puberty to that and mm -hmm. you add finding a voice and just that developmental time of like 11 to 25 or, you know, 50, <laughs> whatever, you know, but that energy has to go somewhere. And if it's being stopped up, it's going to come out in like weird, destructive ways. But if you're taught the skills, then you can use all that energy and redirect it to something. Oh, I have chills now. I, and I've said this before, but every time I get chills because that redirected energy, when the kid gets some efficacy, adult too, around harnessing the energy of their own emotions and behaving according to their values, they soar.
and I get to stand on the ground and go, yes, you're doing so great. <laughs> Keep going. It is the most thrilling job I could have to watch people go from really, really low, some of these kids, mm. really lots of trauma, lots of meds, lots of self-harm, lots of suicide, and to watch them not just like do okay, but thrive, love themselves, joke around with each other, want to teach their own thing with emotional intelligence skills built in, in our workshops to like younger kids. Mm. That is what changes the world. Shit like that. It has a natural ripple effect. I don't have to tell people to do it. There is something in us that when we're full up and loving who we are, the natural tendency is to give with that overflow. I, hmm. I really, you guys, if you are listening to this as a podcast, need to go to YouTube and watch the video just for the live experience of watching you like share that with us. Thank you. That was beautiful. Thank you. And you know, for those who are like, yes, where can we learn more about you, JJ? Where can we, you know, bring our, our kids? Like I'm already like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. 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 Where's the, yep. <laughs> where can people reach out to learn more about you? More well, you I do? think the kids like the kids. Oh God. Uh, younger people like Instagram. So at drjjkelly.com is Instagram and it's my Facebook. I think the parents are more Facebook um, driven. Um, someday I'll learn TikTok, but not today. And then my YouTube channel, uh, I read my whole first book because I hated the audiobook so much. So I just read the whole first book for free on my YouTube channel. That's just Dr. JJ Kelly too. It's all just Dr. JJ Kelly stuff. And for those who are like, what book, what would be the title of the book? <laughs> the first one is a parenting manual. Holy shit. My kid is cutting the complete plan to stop self-harm. And then the second book, which is out now, Holy Shit, I'm a Gifted Misfit, quotes Misfit, uh, The Young Folks Guide to Unlocking Your Superpowers. That's the one for the young people. But both are for everybody. There's so much good shit in there. My whole goal is to be of use. They are, they are thin books. I, if I could make them into a pamphlet, I would. Potent and concise is always my goal with writing because I want people to be able to use what they have read and make their lives better, increase their capacity to experience joy. It's all about and, that. Yes. And so if you could drop one last piece of advice for the heart chakra on people from oh, you, what would you say? We can't control people. You got to give up the wish. Like if we could control people, I swear to God, I would have figured it out by now. <laughs> There is, there is, you know, you can wish it all you want and it can be really well intended to try to tell people what you think is right. It might not match them. They got to find out themselves, even if you are quote unquote, right, you got to let them find their way. And it goes the other way too. the next book being about narcissism, like you got to give up the wish that you can change a narcissist's mind. Just let them think you're the asshole. There's no talking them out of, out of it anyway. They project everything. So having your own kind of sphere to be in and you can give and you can receive and it can be clear instead of stopped up and stagnant inside you. You're, it, that's about control in some form. And for me, that was heart chakra mm, stuff. Mm, yeah, I love that. But not landing well for them or for me it's a it was a little too codependent yeah yeah uh such a big word so uh, that's a different episode um and then <laughs> that's like oh my god yeah let's not go there today because then we're gonna be off on another tangent <laughs> and one last question for you jj what does being a rebel unicorn mean to you hmm <sighs> riding the horse the way it's going <laughs> <laughs> one like I'm home 
I'm in my stable, finally. Come polish my horn. I don't know. That sounded sexual. I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a cool that it is. <laughs> like... I mean, it's so nice to be invited to talk about things that I've always thought and always known and just don't really talk to a lot of people up in this way. Well, it has been so clearly so much fun and also very enlightening and also really just raw, honest, authentic, all the things that, you know, you represent and who you are. So I'm just super elated that uh, you've been shared now <laughs> in this very, I love, by the way, I'm just going to end with this. Whenever somebody says on a podcast, I don't think I've ever said this before. I'm always like, yeah, totally. <laughs> totally. That says something about you. You can get them to do that. Nice work. Yes, yeah. Give that to me now. Well, so, you, invite, you know, I say that too. You open the door and you invite somebody in and you do that as well. You invited me into the woo. You know, I was pretty woo resistant. A couple years ago and I've had I've been lucky enough to interact with people like you that have helped me open up there's gonna be a couple more classes I'll help you get out of yeah, I <laughs> again that's for another podcast episode yes. thank you JJ I love you with my whole heart and thank you so much listeners you know where to find her it's so worth it your kids are worth it you are worth it your emotions are so worth it word Wow, that episode was mind-blowing. I hope you had as many ahas listening to it as I had recording it. I would love to see the Rebel Unicorns podcast spread far and wide across the globe, across the universe. So if you want to share it on your social media with something that you found impactful, leave a review, send it to a friend. It would be oh, so deeply appreciated. Also, a little side note, I did recently change my name. I downloaded a year and a half ago that my name was Avalon Starlight. It was previously my birth name was Tamara Arnold. And if you're interested in learning what your rebel unicorn house is, oh yeah, there's a quiz for that. Think Harry Potter, except you're sorted into how you are impacting the world with your stardust and what energy you're here to shift and change. You can find out your rebel unicorn house at www dot tamara arnold dot ca slash quiz let me know tag me in social media send the quiz out and join the rebel unicorns facebook group to be in a community of like-minded spiritual entrepreneurs who understand that when you shift your energy you transform your business